In Nebraska and across the nation, Ron Hall is a guiding force in public broadcasting. He believes in the power of good storytelling to educate and entertain. Since the advent of public television, he has connected people to their history, culture, and to each other. In the late 1970s, it was Nebraska Public Television, not Boston or New York, that produced the first poetry series for PBS. We called the programs Anyone for Tennyson. We work with major stars like Claire Bloom, Vincent Price, Henry Fonda, and here's Jack Lemmon performing a work by Ogden Nash. Special guest Jack Lemon joined Cynthia Herman and Jill Tanner of the First Poetry Quartet in a program devoted to the poetry of Ogden Nash, Dorothy Parker, Phyllis McGinley, and Yip Harburg. Ogden and Dorothy, Phyllis and Yip. Probably no writer of light verse has been more popular in this country than Ogden Nash. His lines are intentionally uneven and his rhymes outrageous, such as uh, parsley is garsley. Or, if you think the elephant is preposterous, you've probably never seen a rhinoceros. But Nash really knew how to capture the feeling of frustration all of us have when everyday situations get out of hand. You know, uh, dining in a restaurant or going to a party that's too well organized. Or making that decision about whether or not you need glasses. Mm. <laughs> your middle-aged life is merry, and I love to lead it, but there comes a day when your eyes are all right, but your arm isn't long enough to hold a telephone book where you can read it. And your friends get jocular, so you go to the oculist. And of all your friends, he is the joculist. So over his facetiousness, let us skim, only noting that he's been waiting for you ever since you said good evening to his grandfather clock under the impression it was him. And you look at his chart and it says, uh, Sherdlou Querdiop. And you say, well, why Sherdlou Querdiop? And he says, one set of glasses won't do, you need two. One for reading Earl Stanley Gardner's Perry Mason and Keats and Dimian with, and the other for walking around without saying hello to strange women with. So you spend your time taking off your seeing glasses to put on your reading glasses and then remembering that your reading glasses are upstairs or in the car. And then you can't find your seeing glasses again because without them on you can't see where they are. Enough of such mishaps. They try the patience of an ox. I prefer to forget both pair of glasses. Pass my declining years saluting strange women. And grandfather clocks. I'm Ron Hull, bringing you this moment captured and preserved by N.E.T.